This is uh, breakfast for 15 opossums in care. We have some mallards in care too, and there's duckweed for them. And uh, for those of you who remember back when I was saying, oh, here's our temporary kitchen, well, here it is in action. We're doing it. Two weeks ago, we had five animals in care. Today, we have 30 animals in care, and it's only gonna get bigger. Look at it, it's 7.30 in the morning. And we're making breakfast. This is our baby board. And that's who we have. Opossum. Male, male, female, male, 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 female, female. Size seven. And here we are getting their weights for today. There's their weights from yesterday. Here we are setting up to get their weights for today. 104.45. Five, 104.5. Maximum cuteness at this stage, I believe. Turn a peak. They're a peak cute. They're super cute. Aha! See, no, I got it right with these guys. So they all came. One of the problems that we're obviously facing right now mm -hmm. is the fact that the housing we have the outdoor possibly right now is too small. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we are driving through Eureka right now on our way south to Fortuna, which is about a, oh, I guess, you know, about a half hour trip. And uh, we are on our way to go look for a, an opossum, an adult opossum who was hit by a car and was last seen still walking or struggling in that area and we are also going to see about a hawk probably a red-tailed hawk um who is uh been in uh, somebody's yard all morning and they're concerned that they can't fly so we're going to go check them out and um you know so like uh, i'm talking about this now and it's unusual don't usually do this uh kind of thing but I'm in the middle of making, you know, a video to do some fundraising for, you know, our big move. And I have to say that taking a break from fundraising to go actually do the thing that we are fundraising for is, is pretty good. You know, I mean, uh, running, running to Fortuna to, you know, rescue a couple of animals is definitely resets the clock in a lot of ways and gets us back, you know, cause this move has been very stressful. Um, even though it's fantastic, uh, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of money and it's required a lot of support and it has meant that I have really had to shift my gears into doing an awful lot of, you know, um, begging, begging, pleading um, for support, for resources to make this happen. And uh, I, so I just wanted to like um, talk for a minute while in the middle actually doing the thing that we do rather than always just you know standing around begging for money and showing you pictures so any case we'll see what happens when we get there and it's uh, hopefully we find the opossum and hopefully the hawk is all right and doesn't need our help but um, but if he does we'll get him we have vets in the back and boxes to carry him in and uh, we've done this once before Maybe twice, possibly a hundred times, maybe a thousand. Okay, take care. Is that the hawk right there? Oh, that looks like a turkey vulture. Yeah, it's like a young turkey vulture. Hello, good,
okay. <laughs> You're more than welcome to call us up and we'll let you know what we discovered. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, not a problem. Thank you. Thank really, you. Thanks for having us You're welcome. Okay, well we got them. Uh, turkey vulture, not a hawk, not a red-tailed hawk. And uh, yeah, he doesn't look too good. Probably was hit by a car. I mean, just based on his location. And we 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 did not find the opossum. So uh, yeah, we're batting 500. Well, behind me there is our uh, new songbird aviary. It's not finished yet. We have to put the roof on and we have some, you know, appointments for the inside of it. It'll make it nicer for songbirds, uh, planting and things like that. So uh, that's going to be great. And uh, we've got our freezer moved over here from Bayside and that's fantastic. There's still so much to do. Um, Baby season is upon us though. And man, we are, you know, I said in the past that I was gonna spend the rest of my life begging for money for this place and I'm doing it. I am spending the rest of my life begging for money for this place. And I hope it's not offensive to you, but man, do we need the, do we need the help? We do. Um, we have a lot of space out there that needs to have some aviaries built on it. And, uh, we got some going. We got some going. It's happening. We're doing it, but we need your help. Babies are coming. Babies are here. Ah, uh, well, I'll tell you what. You know, it's one thing to uh, build a spaceship, and it's another thing to fly a spaceship, and it's another thing to build and fly the spaceship at the same time. And, you know, in a lot of ways, it's uh, comforting and homey for me. You know, you go to a uh, say say a catastrophic oil spill someplace and when you arrive you immediately start taking care of the uh, impacted wildlife and building the facility to take care of the impacted wildlife so you know it's kind of uh, I've been here I've done this before but you know uh, first of all I was a lot younger then let's remember that but also or at least 10 years younger but um, in any case uh, that is the task this year we have to take care of our region's injured and orphaned wild animals, and we have to rebuild our facility to do it. And I complete faith in our ability to pull it off, but as usual, it's not gonna be without your help. No matter what you can give, whether it's, you know, $5 or $5 a month, all of it goes toward what we're doing. And uh, I mean, it really is a absolute fact that without you, we wouldn't be able to be here. So uh, I hope you continue to support our work and help us get through this very challenging time. And I really, really uh, just wanna thank you for getting us to where we are now. We have a facility that we own. Huh? Well, we have a note that we owe on it. That's certainly true, but we have a facility that is ours and with your help, we will, it will just grow and become uh, the place that our region deserves, our region needs, and our region can produce. And uh, with your help, we're just going to make that happen. Okay? We're just going to make that happen. Thanks. I've said it before, and, you know, I don't mean to dwell because truly our uh, situation is definitely going to be improved. But... I built this seabird pool in December of 2011. A lot of birds have gone through this pool to be released. A lot of birds went through this pool to get released. They came in not releasable and they spent some time in this pool and they left releasable. A lot of birds. A lot of common murs and western crebs and common loons, surf scoters, and eared grebes and horned grebes and And that was our pelican aviary there beyond that pool. This is just a pile of stuff to go over to our new site. And our new site is fantastic. Don't see me sitting here crying too much in my beer, but it is hard not to 
notice this place. So many days of my life spent here. Hang near every day for 12 years. I mean, I built that pool right there. And I don't think we're gonna get it. I can't figure out a way to get it out of here. So we're gonna lose it. But we're gonna build another one. So we're gonna build another one. Yes, we are. <laughs> Bailed compost bin, let's not talk about it. Man, that is a bunch of sticks. Yep, there's our songbird aviary. That was built by a boy scout. And that's the ghost of our waterfowl aviary right there. And this duckling pond, last thing we built. This was, we built this right before the pandemic really got going here. We were just finishing it up, um, painting the brooder boxes right there on the outside. This was for, you know, mallards. And uh, we were just finishing it up when we went in to watch the sheriff explain the uh, shelter at home order that was going in. It was great. I really liked it. But again, I don't know how in the world we're gonna get it out of here. We're not, we're not gonna get it out of here. <sighs> the coyote pups of last year happened in here. That's right, they did. They were great. That was a, those were wonderful coyote pups. Really enjoyed taking care of them. They were both released and it was pretty spectacular. And I planted those willows right there. And that's our raccoon house next door. That really fell apart. That is, that's, that thing is, well, it was doomed to fall apart, and then it did. I mean, when I say it was doomed to fall apart, it's because back when I built this, we were building with whatever we could get our hands on. We didn't have any money. So some of those members were um, not in the best shape. And there it is collapsed. But that river, oh, man that river this would run water right we'd run water through that hide eggs we raised a lot of raccoons in here they did great no raccoons in here this spring this was the raccoon nursery yes it was oh i remember that stick well, you have your favorite sticks. Yep, we built this. This is where they would come in between their eyes opening and being weaned. They would be housed in these little dens, we called them. See, that's den two. And that's den one.